Hey everybody, today I'm predicting East versus West 11. Uh, there are a lot of matches, so I'll try to be quick with each of my predictions. Uh, starting, I'll just go in the order of uh, the, the matches that Engen posted. So starting with Robbie Topi versus Henrik Pardines. Um, it's it's hard to say how Robbie is going to stack up against international competition because he, as far as I know, he hasn't really gone international. He was in my class at East versus West finals. Um, he didn't have any hard matches except for his match with Doug Allen. And... Uh, you know, which to me, I mean, Doug's amazing. And when he's when he's really on, he's on. He gave Krasimir a great left-hand super match last year. It was close that first round and a little less close the second round. And the third round, he got run over. But so Doug Allen's outside strength is really, really, really good, uh, even compared to the international community. And Robbie's was even a little better than that. So, um, but knowing how I stack up with these guys, it doesn't give me good feelings about him traveling internationally and pulling a guy like Emmerich. So if Emmerich's in good shape, um, I, I have a feeling he'll be the favorite. Not only is he more experienced in international competition and has not home field advantage because he's got to travel too, but uh, I don't know that Robbie coming down from years at super heavyweight and only being down in this weight class for about a year, I don't know if he's able to bring the power that, uh, you know, I don't know if he's able to bring the power. If he was pulling at 280 pounds, like when he pulled Cody Merritt, Robbie's probably just too strong. But at 231, ooh, I don't know. Um, Robbie's got a great posting top roll. He doesn't have any inside game. So uh, Emmerich, yeah, Emmerich, I, I'm, I'm going to favor Emmerich on this one. Uh, next, Nerdlet Ider Khan versus Vali Ichikiti. Um, I don't really know how these guys will stack up, but Nerdlet's coming up from a... a uh, championship and he's he's gaining he's coming up in weight so um, he's probably going to be pretty strong coming into this one. Uh, Vala is explosive. I mean they're both powerful guys. I really don't know. I really don't know who to pick on this one. I'm going to slightly favor Nerdlet just because he's the one that I know more and he you know he was the the lighter weight champion. So um, yeah, tough match to call because of just lack of common opponents in, in recent history that I know of. But yeah, Nerdlet, it's hard to bet against that guy. Marcio Barbosa versus Oleg Petrenko. Um, I, I have a lot to say about this match. I'll try to keep it brief. Oleg has a better hand, like better straight cut than Marcio, and a bit better side pressure. It's not way better, all right? I don't, like, don't get too twisted. Marcio is really, really strong inside. Um, Marcio was able to beat Pavlo inside. His ability to commit the shoulders, ability to use the biceps. I mean, Marcio will pretty much hook anybody if he has to, except for Todd Hutchings. That's like the only guy that I've ever seen him try to run from when hook was an option. Even Ron Bath back in the day, Marcio would happily go inside if he couldn't set the top wall. Marcio has better rising strength, better back pressure. He's more explosive, but also has better endurance. Uh, Marcio really is a phenom, isn't he? Uh, Marcio is much more technical. He has much more fluidity on the table, whereas Oleg is more uncoordinated and, and kind of a little, you know, robotic. He's very strong, but he doesn't have the ability to to make good transitions and fluid movements and especially dynamics. Like, I mean, Marcio is flying all over the table, and as long as he can keep his elbow down, he's a super dangerous dude. The only question is, can Marcio pop the hand of Oleg? Marcio has a strange characteristic where he's able to be extremely rigid and loaded up in the setup and then explode. This is something that Oleg doesn't have. So I don't think that Marcio is necessarily going to be able to just straight up top roll Oleg, but I do think he'll be able to hit the hand uh, off of go and then follow through with the shoulder when the match is on his side of the table. Okay, so I don't think he's going to be able to bust the hand like because uh, his style of top roll is not like John Brzezink's, which is more low, using a big cross section and going out this way. And that's how John was able to flop a leg. But this being a five-round super match, maybe Marcio doesn't get through it totally clean. But I think as the rounds go on, Oleg's going to have more and more trouble keeping that hand together. And Marcio's going to be able to go through it. I mean, even Chance Shaw was able to create problems for Oleg in the hand at, at some points. And I don't regard Chance's top roll as highly as I do Marcio's. That could be wrong. I don't think they've ever pulled, but to me, Marcio is like top, top, top uh, for, for the heavyweight division. So 
I'm going to slightly favor Marcio on this one. It's possible that Oleg is just too strong, and it's possible that in the hook. Now, Oleg's not going to run over Marcio in the hook, so it'll probably end up inside at some point. Oleg may be stronger in there, but he's not as technical, and he doesn't have as good endurance. And I don't know if anybody at this weight class is strong enough to just smash Marcio in the hook. That, that would be a big surprise to me. So I'm going to favor Marcio on this one slightly, even though I know the betting odds favor Petrenko. Uh, next match... Oleg Joke versus Aftandel Tuturidze. I don't bet on any top roller against Oleg. Right? Any guy that pulls outside, Oleg's going to smack him. Not that he's invincible. I mean, he has been beaten by top rollers before. But Joke is just, he's, he's just incredible. Right? He's just incredible. What can you say? So I'm going to favor him. Mendagas Teresitis versus Daniel Prokopchuk. They pulled before, and I see it going similar to the way they always have. Daniel's very strong, and it's hard to bet against him. He'll probably have his wrist flattened out or lose it. He might even have some ugly slips. He might lose a round on fouls. But when it comes down to it, I see this match going straps. I see Mandalgas being able to expose the hand and then not being able to come across center, and he'll ultimately lose to Daniel. Daniel, he gets in the straps. It's like a tractor. He comes forward, and then it's just... and. Yeah, so what you got the wrist. It's almost impossible to turn his pronation over. And Mendagas, I mean, does Mendagas have the ability to turn a guy over as well as Samusha? Because Samusha, Samusha had to freak a top roll. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't he couldn't hook Daniel. Daniel was able to beat him like that. So yeah, I, I don't I don't see Teresitis being able to come across the center against Daniel. And he would have to be able to do that in order to finish him. Next, Artyom Tainov versus Zurab Tavridze. I'm a little surprised that Zurab got a title shot. Yeah, he's coming down to 95, and uh, I know he's had some good showings at AMC, but I don't really regard, even though left is his better arm, and he's a WAF world champion, former world champion at a much lighter weight class, I don't regard his left arm as being the level of Tainov. Tainov is extremely strong, and he has a better technical range, more explosiveness, and Maybe not more endurance than Zurab. Zurab, obviously, we've seen it in pretty much every match of his that, that he was even in the match. He'll just soldier through like this, laying on his arm, and his arm strength is so incredible. But I don't think he'll be able to get in a good position against Tainov. Tainov's going to outposition him probably with an outside move and then follow through with his shoulder. And I really don't think there's going to be that much Zurab can do about it. So, yeah, pretty heavy favorite to me is Artem Tainov. Paul Lynn versus Iraqli Zerikashvili. This is a really tough match to call. I really don't know the answer. Um, Paul Lynn was able to force John into a hook uh, when they pulled. Now, I know that was the beginning, you know, second, whatever, second match of John's comeback. But he does have awesome hand strength. I, I don't know if it's as good as Rustam's. It's really hard to say. Rustam went 3-2 down against Iraqli. It was really a coin toss. Rackley's an amazing top roller, really amazing. Now, neither of these guys have great endurance. Both of them are very explosive. Paul's super explosive. If he turns Iraqli, it's over. If he doesn't get his wrist bent, Iraqli wins. So this is super, super, super close match, 50-50. I don't want to bet against Paul, but I don't want to... Oh, it's, so, it's so close. I, I don't know the answer. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slightly favor Iraqli on this one. Paul's making a big cut. Paul's a lot shorter. I feel like Arakley's going to be able to create exposure on the hand, and I feel like he's learned some lessons with the guys that he's pulled. John, Rustam, I I feel like he's gonna he's gonna be able to find a way through Paul. But I'd love to see Paul win. Okay, <clears throat> Matt Mask and Wagner Portolato. Wagner's way bigger than Matt. I mean, he's not as tall, but he's way bigger. And I know this is right arm. And Wagner, for years, dealt with a right arm issue. Apparently, it's good now. If it was left, it wouldn't even be close. There'd be no point in this match. But he still has his shoulder. And I I think that Matt probably is going to be able to create exposure on the hand. I don't think he's going to be able to come across the middle and beat Wagner. Now, I would love to see, I'd love to see Matt take a round or win the match. Um... I don't know. I just don't see him being able to get through that shoulder and elbow of Wagner, unless there's a problem that, you know, persists or something that I don't know about. But if he's really healthy enough to compete at this level, I, I think I think he'll lose some hand, but he'll be able to follow it up, and Matt won't be able to do anything. I don't know. Uh, I know that 
regardless of whoever wins, I know the table is going to lose. I think we can all agree on that. Next, uh, that was Samusha versus Vladimir Mayorov. Um, yeah, Mayorov is, or Mayorov is OG. And if he brings the kind of shape that he used to bring and laugh, Samusha is in trouble. But Samusha has a really great record in East versus West. The only match he lost was to Paul Lynn, who was bigger. So he's got the power. Both of these guys are very powerful. Both of these guys, uh, you know, Mayorov's a bit more explosive. And he'll be able to hit into a better position. It's probably going to be a probably going to be a drawn out hook match. But uh, yeah, if Mayorov is bringing the kind of shape that he used to bring, Samusha could be in trouble. But we haven't seen that, so I'm going to favor Samusha the champ again on this one. I mean, the guy, the guy's stalwart. He he never loses. So how can you bet against the guy? All right, I need to see Mayorov show up like he used to before I start betting on him. Next, Ivan Matyushenko versus Rino Masic. I love this match. Not so much because I think it's going to be super close, but because I love seeing uh, the greats from a few years ago and the future pulling together. I mean, uh, Rino's 19 years old. Matyushenko is a five-time WAF world champion. And Rino won worlds this year, of course. We all know that. <sighs> I think it's going to be a hard day for Rino. I'm, I'm, I'm picking Matyushenko on this one for sure. Reno's only chance is to set the hook because if he if he tries to press Machishenko, he's going to get ripped to the pad, and I don't think he has any room to top roll either. I mean, Reno doesn't. He's got great back pressure, but he does not have the the top roll, the level that you'd need to in order to open up the hand of Machishenko. I mean, that's that's like elite elite world level. Nobody probably could set the hook as well as Machishenko, except maybe a guy like Levon who doesn't hook, but he just has that cup he could hook if he wanted. <laughs> so. Um, Machyshenko is extremely explosive, but he also has great endurance. Really a serious problem. He might be the number one left-hander at heavyweight. Um, Reno's the future, okay? I mean, in a couple of years, th there might not be anybody who could beat this guy. But right now, I think Machyshenko's a mountain a little bit too tall to climb. So I'm picking Machyshenko on this one. But I still love this match. I, I can't wait to see it. Uh, John Brzezink versus Krasimir Kostadinov. Yes, uh... John clearly cutting down to 95 kilos. He was not the same guy uh, as him at 105. I mean, he, he he straight up just did not have the rotational power or energy to get through Sasho's hand. And, well, I think that, okay, so Sasho and Krasimir both have small hands. I'm not sure whose hand is smaller. Probably Sasho's by a little bit, but but they're both small. I would guess that Sasha's just straight cup ability is probably a little better. Sasho showed up better against Irakli than... Kostadinov did, so mm. um, hook setting ability is probably a little bit better from Sasho. <sighs> John's pulled Krasimir before. He kind of knows what to expect, and him being a nice full 105 kilos, uh, I expect the match to go outside this way. I expect John to be able to create exposure on the hand. What he has to do is he has, as soon as he's getting that hand flat or, or open a little bit, he has to be very aggressive to the pin. He can't just continue to pull back and pull back and pull back because his shoulder doesn't allow him to cross the center easily. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be tough for John if he, if he's not able to get a lot of hand exposure right in the center because Krasimir, he could pull with a flop wrist. He's done that against Kardecha. He's done that uh, quite a number of times and, and had success. He's really quite strong in that move. He had great side pressure, even without his hand. Probably enough to get through John's shoulder. So, if John's very aggressive, uh, you know, I mean, if he's too aggressive off the go, he might get sucked into a hook. Like if he goes through the pin too early, he might get pulled into a hook. So he has to come back, get some exposure on the hand, and then create that twist through the hand. I think John knows that. I think he, I think he knows what to do, and I think he'll be able to pull it off. Um, if John loses any rounds, he's probably going to lose the whole thing so i'm going to say 3-0 john but uh, it, it it could it, it could easily be 3-2 krasimir i mean or, or something like that it could easily be a turnaround match for krasimir because his endurance is really quite good and uh his speed's pretty good too he's faster than john but i i'm not sure like once john loads up in the center i'm not sure that krasimir is going to be able to get any bend on his wrist so okay picking john um Next, Alijan Muratov versus Yevgeny Prudnik. Wow, can't wait to see this match. These guys are primo at, at heavyweight or light heavyweight. 
Prudnik has amazing endurance. Prudnik's a freak, strength freak. Is he going to be able to stop that, that two-direction hit that Muratov has? I don't know. This being a title match, best of seven, I'm picking Prudnik on this one because of that long endurance. I, I actually think the first round or two, uh, Muratov might straight up run Prudnik over. I mean, cause he'll be able to set that hook coming forward. And then once everything's locked into position, that extreme rotation through the body. I mean, once he's locked this way, that deviation and rotation that he does, that he, I mean, oh, it's it's so nasty. And Dadi Kyan was able to do that against Prudnik, and he was able to, to pin him a couple of times. And I see Muratov having better endurance than Dadi Kyan. I actually don't see him being as technical. This may surprise people, but Dadi Kyan showed an amazing technical range when he pulled Prudnik. He just wasn't able to last long enough to get through him that third round. He just didn't have the endurance. But he had great transitions inside out. He didn't have strong pressing, but when he was able to reverse out, it was very smooth and very strong. And I think that Muratov's probably probably his match in, in strength or maybe even better. I mean, Muratov's a freaking weirdo. But I think Prudnik's gotten stronger as well. I think Prudnik... God, I'm going to say this is going to go 4-3 Prudnik. That's my guess. It's going to go 4-3 to Prudnik. Um, it's really hard to bet against him. And when you, you know... There's no common matches, but there is a little bit of MMA math that you could probably do here. Um, <clears throat> I won't go into it. I just think that nobody's top rolling here. Prudnik is going to be able to slow Muratov down. And by the fourth round, he'll be getting really hard stops and start to work the match back on, uh, on A side and win. So, yeah, I'm calling it 4-3 Prudnik. Maybe Muratov runs him over four times in a row. I don't know, but I'm calling 4-3 Prudnik. Okay, Artyom Morozov versus Alex Kurdecha. Uh, we haven't seen Alex Pool in a long time. <sighs> Kurdecha pulled Dave Chafee within, I think, like two months of when Morozov pulled Dave Chafee. Okay, now, Kurdecha was actually able to expose Dave's hand, but... He didn't have the finishing power. His own cupping, this is right-handed, of course, his own cupping failed against the rotation of Dave, which is normal. Everybody gets toppled by Dave. Uh, Kurdecha also does not have great endurance, I would say. Um, getting outlasted by guys like Krasimir, Angarbaev, uh, even Dave Chafee. I mean, it was less about getting outlasted there and more about just getting uh, outpowered after a couple of starts, but he, he looked pretty bad by the end of the Chafee match. But the first two rounds, or let's just say the first round against Morozov, Dave Chafee top rolled him from an extremely deep grip. Okay. And contrary to popular belief that Morozov's left is a better arm, his left is higher ranked, but his right arm is actually stronger. Okay, his, his left arm is higher ranked because of the competition and who he's pulled against, and it's incredible. His right's actually his stronger arm. Okay, he said this when referring to the match uh, that he had with Hermes. Everybody thought, oh, Hermes is so up here. And Morozov's like, well, my right's also better than my left, just like Hermes. He just happened to be the champ because of who was he pulled. He pulled Cody Merritt and Corey West and uh, Tobias. So he got top rolled by Tobias. Um, Anyway, Kurdecha's left is actually his better and stronger arm. I'd say they're close to equal, but his left is a bit stronger than his right. And I've never seen somebody who just is so effortlessly able to generate power with his left arm. Um, he, I mean, he smacked Ryan Espy. Now, this was at a time Ryan Espy's fallen off a lot, even losing to guys like Pavlo. But he smacked Ryan Espy around when they had their, when they had their match left-handed. And Cody Merritt had never pinned Ryan Espy by that point, okay? Cody Merritt had never pinned Ryan Espy by the time that they pulled. And Cody did create problems for Morozov that first round. He, he couldn't quite get his wrist bent. He ended up winning, ended up smacking him. But Cody's outside pressures were strong enough to neutralize the wrist, at least for a moment. I, I, I'm pretty confident Kurdech is able to generate more power. Now he's bigger and stronger than ever. He's, he's gained like 15 kilos or something. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I will say that this being a title match, left-handed, 
And the fact that it's therefore seven rounds favors Morozov on this one. I don't think Artyom's going to be able to top roll him. I don't think he's got the. I I, I mean, if he, he tries to top roll, it's gonna it's gonna be terrible. He's gonna get wiped by Kurdenchuk. And I don't know if it's possible to hook Kurdenchuk. I mean, that's that's Artyom's only chance is being able to hook him. Um, Maybe he can come through with the shoulder. Like, like I said, Kurdech has lost to guys with presses before, but that was right-handed. It's really hard to say. Um, really close to 50-50 match. That's why I love it. Um, I want Kurdech to win this one because I really do believe that he's got the stuff. I just haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet at this level in, in any recent history. So, uh, yeah, being a long match, requiring a lot of endurance. Morozov's is a great endurance puller. I have a feeling that... Kurdech is going to start to fall apart piece by piece, and Morozov is going to end up winning, even if Kurdech is able to set the top roll a couple of times early. So, yeah, I'm going to pick Morozov on this one, but this one, back, like, I really, I really do think that Kurdech might just be so strong that he runs over him. It could happen. It really could happen. Or he gets clobbered. I mean, I really don't know. What kind of shape is he in? Kurdech is one of those guys that's got, sky's the limits. That, that his potential is insane. So he puts it together. Yeah, slight favor to Morozov here. And then Todd Hutchings versus David Dadikian. Dadikian is a potential nightmare for Todd Hutchings because he has the ability. He's got a very cup dominant top roll. He has the ability potentially to do what Prudnik did. Um, Dadikian is very explosive. Daddy Khan does not have good endurance. If the match stops, it's over, all right? And Todd has a habit of stopping guys. If the match goes inside, it's over. Daddy Khan has no chance of pulling through Hutchin. Don't believe it. The question is, can Daddy Khan top roll Hutchings with that cup the way that he did against Irakli in the way that Prudnik did against Hutchings. I don't know how easily Prudnik would be able to do that against Irakli, all right? Prudnik is best in class in that hand strength. Dadikian's probably second best. Or maybe the best. I really don't know. I'm never betting against Todd Hutchings on a weight class match. I'm never going to do it, okay? So I'm picking Todd on this one. I think he'll stop the match. And it being a title match, a seven-rounder, does matter. I do see him winning this match. I don't see him winning it cleanly. I see him getting pinned at some point. All right, so I don't think he's going to sweep that account, but I do see him winning the match. It's possible he just gets slapped four times. I don't think that's going to happen. Todd's very smart. Todd's got a great plan. So I see him gutting it out and winning. Uh, I don't know if it'll go to seven rounds. Like if As soon as he wins one match against that account, he's, he's going to win every round after that. So uh, again, I don't see him getting through this cleanly, but I do see him ultimately winning the match. So, yeah, picking Hutchings on this one. And that's it, guys. Those are all the matches on the East versus West 11 card. Let me know what you think. Sorry the video is a little long, but uh, I'll see you next time.